Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Leadership Boy Podcast. I'm Enrique with my co-host, Vince, and we're about to bring you the best in the veteran community, entrepreneurship, and leadership arena, and Vince will introduce. Yes, indeed. First, you got to flip your calendar because here it is April, right? It's so crazy how time is just going by, but we're honored to have Olivia Nunn here with us. She is the owner of Olivia Nunn Communication, LLC from the great Washington, D.C., Baltimore area. So, Olivia, welcome to the show. Let's start off. Tell us a little bit about you. Thank you so very much for having me on your show. Um, totally appreciate it. And um, yeah, so a little bit about me. I am a retired U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel, and um, I am in the D.C. area. I'm a single mom of two beautiful children. I have an eight-year-old daughter and a five-year-old son. And I was actually married to another lieutenant colonel in the army. So I was dual military. So I understand that life as well. And I spent 10 years as a chemical officer and then 10 years as a public affairs officer. And I spent a lot of time in the DC area uh, doing public affairs. And then before that at West Point. So my specialty is communications. And now I spend a lot of time um, in the military community giving back because that's where my heart is. And I'm also a beauty pageant queen. I am Ms. New York. Well, I tell you, I was about to say, hey, don't forget about the beauty <laughs> pageant quick because I know and follow your work. Congratulations on uh, a great career in the Army. Thank you for that. Whoa. We know how to say that, even some Navy people. And uh, so tell us a little bit more about your communications company. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I guess to get there, I should probably start how it all started. Um, for me, about a year ago, I got a phone call from a really good friend, another Army veteran, and uh, Scott Davidson. He owns his own company, but he also has a couple nonprofits, and he's well known for uh, what he does in the community in terms of a nonprofit, Burbiz, right? It's this huge community where uh, he brings veterans together to fellowship and, um he said, Hey, Olivia, what are you doing? I'm like, nah, nothing. You know, and I, I was just, um, finishing, you know, getting close to finishing up my divorce and I wasn't in a good, a good place. And he was like, Hey, let me take you out to lunch. I said, okay. And so I went out to lunch and, um, he said, where's your LLC? And I kind of looked at him with this deer in the headlight look. And I'm like, what are you, what are you talking about? He's like, I got work for you. And I'm like, okay, because Previous to that, I worked in U.S. Army Soldier for Life, which is a strategic organization on behalf of the Army. And I worked with him in that capacity. He's like, I've got work for you. I need you to get an LLC so you can, you know, do work with me. And I, I kind of looked at him like, uh, okay. And previous to that, people kept telling me to get an LLC. Like, Olivia, you've got talent. You've got a skill set that people would hire you. And I don't know why it took that moment for all of it to sink in. And I said, uh, okay. And literally after that meeting, I went and got an LLC and born from that simple conversation of him checking on me, you know, cause of mental health, which is a big part of what I do. That is a huge platform that I talk about. Um, you know, I created my LLC, which is a specialty of strategic communications. And my specialty is about brand awareness and brand management and social media. That is, you know, my wheelhouse in podcasting. And from that, you know, I'm his ambassador for Burbiz and all simply because he checked on his friend and basically said, Olivia, I've got a job for you and I'm giving you task and purpose because I'm reminding you of a skill set that you have. And I'm reminding you that you have purpose. That is a phenomenal story, Olivia. Thank you for sharing. And at the end, we'll share about what we're doing to connect with other veterans and the first responder community. But yes, you have purpose and definitely Olivia Nun Communication has been born. The LSC is in the house. So we had the pandemic hit us hard. As some people pivoted, some people unfortunately lost their businesses and some thrived. How did uh, Olivia Nun Communication LSC uh, was impacted by the pandemic itself? I think for me, it really didn't impact from a negative perspective. It allowed me to thrive. Why do I say that? For me, you know, coming through the pandemic, you know, so it was a negative in a personal aspect, but from a business perspective, it allowed me to grow, right? It gave me 
task. It gave me purpose. And so as I was transitioning out of the military, I did what we talk about in that transition space, which is go do a fellowship, right? Go do an internship. And I interned with Military Officers Association of America, which before I, in, before I did my internship, that year before I was going to transition, I knew that I wanted to intern. And I laid that groundwork a year out. And MOA traditionally in September always has this huge, big transition event in September in DC. And I, again, I would attend on behalf of Soldier for Life. And I had this conversation with mom like, hey, so... I'm going to transition next year. How about uh, I come do a internship with you guys? And they're like, hey, how about you come do that? Let's have a conversation. And so I laid that groundwork. And when the time came, I did an internship and I did a six week internship with them. And in that internship time frame, I approached them and said, hey, I have this idea. You guys are this nonprofit organization that you know, lobbies on behalf of the military community. And I want to make sure that your listeners understand that while the title says Military Officers Association of America, they are lobbying and advocating on behalf of the military community as a whole, not just officers. It's all about the military community, both officers enlisted and their families. And so they... As I'm working with them, I said, hey, you guys are this great organization that fights and advocates for us when we can't in uniform. There's this medium that I think that you guys are missing, and that medium is podcasting. Why? Because I understood the world of podcasting because I was a podcast host for U.S. Army Soldier for Life for nine seasons. And so I kind of pitched to them like, I think you guys should podcast. And they're like, yeah, I think we should. That's a great idea. And I was like, not only that, I think there's this great podcast host that you should hire me. And, um, and I totally pitched to the president of MOA and it was interesting. The conversation went a little wonky too. I, I honestly think I pitched myself out of that contract, but in fact, I actually got hired. Right. And you could say the rest is history two seasons in now. And here I am growing my LLC in terms of a podcast. While yes, my company is still very young and very new, I am doing what I believe in, which is telling stories. I am a communicator and I believe in sharing stories. I believe storytelling is where the heart is. And that's what I truly believe is important because that's what I said when I was in the army at US Army Soldier for Life. It's all about storytelling. Why? Because the motto is that once a soldier, always a soldier, a soldier for life. And in order to, to breathe that in, you have to share your story. How do you get the next generation to serve? You got to share your story. We are less than 0.45% of the nation serves in any one of the services. So we're talking 99% of America's population is disconnected from the military. They don't know who we are. They don't know what we do. They only understand the military based on what Hollywood puts out about us or what they see in the news. And yet the Wounded Warrior Project is a great organization. But the backside of that story is they only see the brokenness of us. They only see the horror stories of us. They see all the bad things. They don't see the millions of amazing things that the service does for us, right? All the soft skills, all the, the things that we come out, right? The tribe that we have, and they're not going to know about us unless we share that story. And that's why I'm such a huge advocate about storytelling and what greater way of doing that through the advocacy and through the work of podcasting. And we are advocates of that <laughs> being both uh, service members, prior service members and retired service members. We know how important that story is. Now, you mentioned something earlier on uh, dealing with transitions, and I love what you said specifically about you lay the groundwork. So for those that are listening, uh, it really is the groundwork you lay that allows you to transition as smoothly as possible. Olivia is a testament to that. Not only has she gone and transitioned into podcasting or did it while in service, but then transitioned out into podcasting, venturing out into beauty pageants and all these other things that she does, which is amazing. Um, so Olivia, you, you, you laid the groundwork, you're doing some work now, you created your LLC. So what's on the horizon for the communications company? 
So, you know, there's like all these things that I want to do. And what I started is so recently, a few months ago, I became an executive director to a nonprofit organization. And actually, you know, that's what the picture is behind me. And it's the work, play, obsession, all in foundation. And, um, and the president of that foundation is actually my partner. And with that, it's to give back to the community, right, through through active play. And through that, we want to give back to the roots of, and for him, it was jujitsu. So how do we get back into the community and specifically in the realm of mental health, right? He's a huge mental health advocate, and so am I. Mine is from a very personal story when I was going through my transition. And I'm, and I'm very open about it. And, and for me, that story is unfortunately, the dark side of suicide. And so I want to be able to use my LLC. And how do we, from that, how do I use communications, this, this LLC in conjunction with this nonprofit? And how do we take the community and this tribe? And how do we expand the, the conversation of mental health, right? How do we give back to the community? How do we have this conversation? And how do we change the narrative? What do I mean by all of that? I think in order to, to understand that, I have to explain where my story comes from. When I was transitioning, I went through the unexpected divorce. And when that happened for me, I shattered, right? Because I was unexpected. And for me, I went to a very dark place and I planned my suicide. And in those dark moments, when I realized that I needed help, when I finally got that low and realized I needed help, here I was a Lieutenant Colonel in the United States Army working for US Army Soldier for Life who had access to hundreds of organizations, many of them that, that work in the realm of mental health, who knew me by name and I knew them by name. And when I finally uttered the hardest words ever that I needed help, and I finally reached out and said, I need help. And, it, and I want to be very clear, these organizations were willing to help and wanted to help. They couldn't help because they were overlogged with so many other cases. Their answer to me is, I'm sorry, Olivia, I can't help you. The best case is maybe six months, more than likely a year. I didn't know if I had six days left in me. I'm a lieutenant colonel who knows how no is not an answer, right? I'm five foot one with a giant attitude. Here's the thing. The army and majority of the military is not made up of lieutenant colonels. The majority of the military is made up of specialists and below who don't know what they don't know. And they don't have an attitude of five foot one and larger who's going to accept no as an answer. And that's why we have 22 a day. And to me, that can't be the answer. That blows my mind. And so for me, it's about advocating for those that can't advocate for themselves. We have to change the narrative. We have to change the conversation. So one, it's let's have the conversation. Let's change the narrative. So one, that it's okay to not be okay. The first part. Two, that our soldiers, our sailors, our Marines, our airmen see our leaders talk about it's okay to not being okay. And seeing our leaders go get help. And also that they see that it's not a detriment to their careers. And also at the same time that it's okay to take time for themselves. And also that we're talking about that there's not enough resources. And how do we change that? We've got to change that through policy. Because that's the truth. Some of the red tape out there is about policy. And then all of it is about funding. And it takes more than just the military community doing something about it. It's going to take the civilian community assisting the military community. So we have to have this conversation as much as it's difficult and uncomfortable. And that's why I'm really passionate about having this conversation. And so how do we do it? So we've got to bring in the nonprofit space. We've got to have the communication space. And that's what I really want to do is how do I move my business along, along with the work that I'm doing in this nonprofit space and also bringing along the people that I've worked with. And, you know, it's what I like to do. I'm a talker, I'm a storyteller and bringing the people along as I move along in this space. 
Well, Olivia, first, let me just share that, you know, thank you. It took a lot of courage for you to even embrace the fact that you needed help. And a lot of folks out there definitely will resonate with your story. And I'm glad you have this platform and other platforms to either spread awareness and to provide these resources. Because yeah, six months down the road, you don't have six days, like you said, your, your light might extinguish in a day or hours. So thank you, Olivia, for sharing. And as a leader, one of those, uh, those skill sets that we talk about is courage and, and integrity. And what do you do to thrive uh, in your professional life to make you more successful as a leader? You know, I think for me is like recognizing what are your strengths. And for me, my strength is I'm a talker. I am a people person and I love being around people. And so for me, I'm a creator and I love to create content. So I love spending, unfortunately, I, I know a lot of people don't like social media, but I love spending time on social media. And one of the things that I, I recently got into, I went to Vegas in February for the national pageant. So I competed at the national level to try to be the national Ms. And in that space, I got into reels because I had to make reels at the national pageant for a lot of our um a lot of our national ambassadorship. And I just really got into it. So now if you follow me on Instagram, cause I have a different handle, like my personal handle. And so I like got into making reels and a lot of like transition reels about, you know, this is what I look like when I wake up. And then this is what I look like when I like put myself together and they're fun. Um, and so for me, like, that's just like a quick break in the day, just to kind of like, just take a mental break from everything. And that really sets my intentions. And then at the same time, you know, reading and, and also my drive back to what is it that I'm doing? And then at the same time, you know, I have to remind myself, why am I doing this? And for me, and, and I'm sure for many people, it's your kids, right? It's why do you do anything that you do? And it's about, I want to give a legacy back to my children, you know, I want them to have something bigger and better than what I did. And at the end of the day, it's also a, what legacy am I leaving behind? The other day I posted on LinkedIn, you know, last week, Burbiz happened here in the DC region. And during Burbiz, you know, like I said, I'm the ambassador. I met two incredible women who gave back to the community. You know, they sold some t-shirts and with that, they gave back a check to Burbiz. And, you know, it's about women empowerment and, you know, being empowered. And, you know, when I, when I wrote that post and I was staring at that photo, I had a very realistic moment about staring at that photo about how my earlier years, how in, I wouldn't have thought about empowering women, right? In my early years, I would have spent time tearing down women because that's what was done to me. That's what I was taught to do right? because that's how you thrived. And it was somewhere when I made field grade that I just said I was done with that. I was done with tearing women down. So, and that got me thinking about what is the legacy that we're leaving, right? What is the legacy that I want to leave in the military community? And so it's not just the legacy for your children. It's not the legacy for your family, but for the community as a whole. And that is what pushes me. That is the drive. And that is what I think about. And that is what renews me every single morning. So at the end of the day is when somebody looks at my communication or looks at what I'm doing is when they say Olivia Nunn, I hope that the legacy I leave behind is that she did something good. She did something worthwhile for this community. And, and the notes that I get um, back, you know, that's what pushes me and that's what renews me. And I believe that everyone that endeavors to impact their community, the world at large, that's, that's the goal, right? Um, now, Olivia, you was uh, mentioning, you know, as you was going up to field grade, right? So there's a lot of time between you starting and getting to field grade. A, a lot of mentors, a lot of leaders that come in and out of your life, one of them must have shared uh, a, a nugget that said, you know, this is how you do it. And you said, that's exactly how I'm going to take that. I'm going to use that, uh, that you would like to share with an emerging leader today that could help them out. You know, you know, what's really sad. Um, most of the leadership that I got, and before I say this, 
I did work for some great leaders. So I, I don't want to say like I didn't have great leaders. And there were a lot of things that I did take away. But most of the time, I learned how not to do things, right? Most of the time, I worked for such a-holes, right? That I, I, because I grew up in combat arms, I was oftentimes the only woman, right? I grew up around tankers and infantry and field artillery guys. And so I had to walk into a room literally with the biggest stick, literally and figuratively with the biggest stick to have a seat at the table, right? And a lot of people thought I, I had the biggest attitude and the biggest chip on my shoulder and that was the biggest bitch, right? And I kind of had to be just to have a seat at the table because I was always checked every single day as if I didn't know anything, as if I was the biggest dummy dum dum in the room. But in fact, I was the smartest person in there and I was the hardest worker in the room, but it was simply because I was a woman. Right. And also, like I'd mentioned, I'm five foot one and I'm also Korean American. So there's this generalization that I was tiny and I'm small and I'm Asian, that I'm like this China doll that's going to break. Right. So all of these, these concepts are these notions about me. And so the way, so there's a lot of sexism in this. So the way I was treated was as if I, you know, it was just a lot of times just, just, I was just treated poorly. And so a lot of times I walked away from any situations of, I am not doing that, but I will tell you what I, what I carried to heart was what my dad taught me. My dad was in the army when I was a kid, he served for 12 years. He was enlisted. He was a combat engineer. And this is what he told me. He said, always take care of your soldiers. If you take care of them, they will always take care of you. And so I've always taken that to heart. So if I place them first, and if I place them first and parallel that with the mission requirements, then nothing could ever go wrong. I mean, yeah, Murphy's Law is going to happen. But for the most part, if you take care of them, then everything else is gravy, right? And so that's how I've always approached things. That if I took care of them, then I can handle anything else. And that's what I always strive to in the legacy of every position that I ever had is that if my soldiers knew that I truly cared for them, then I can handle anything else. And along the way, you know, I've worked for some great people that I've, you know, taken small nuggets of, oh, that's a great way of how to maybe, you know, organize something, or maybe that's a great way of how to handle a tough situation. But I would say overall, I walked away with, that's not a good way of doing something because- they were just assholes. Those are definitely lessons learned. You know, you want the reward, but there's the reality of it. And you being the first there speaks volumes of you and your courage and your, your internal fortitude. So thank you for, for leading the way. Dad gave you some great advice, taking care of your troops, taking care of your team. Hopefully folks listening in will understand that. And this woman doesn't back down on anything five foot one, but a giant at heart and a giant for me. <laughs> so I definitely applaud you for that. So Olivia, how do you handle either challenges you face or currently facing? You know, for me, especially, you know, throughout my life, but especially, you know, that time that was hard for me last year is, you know, prayer, you know, faith is super important to me. And every single time that I don't go back to my faith, you know, you can look on throughout my life. That's when everything goes sideways, right? So faith is really important. When I ground myself in faith, that's when things are right. And so if I keep my eyes on him, if I ask in prayer, if I keep aligned with him and, and ask him to guide my steps, then I know that I'm on the right path. And, and I say that as if like, that's so easy because it isn't. There's so many distractions in life right? It's so easy to get caught up in all of the things that happen in our life, that it's easy to put aside the five or 10 minutes that I should be doing in prayer, and the Bible studies and the daily devotions. But I know that that's what I need to be doing. Because those times that when I'm disciplined in doing that, when I'm dedicated to that, those are the times that my life has flourished well. 
That's everything in my career to promotions, to getting the right jobs, to the time in, in trying to have kids, um, everything. Um, and so for me, it's, it's prayer. It's going back to faith. I'm one that can tell you no obstacle is too great for faith. And so uh, I'm glad that you, that's one of the areas that you focus on uh, to go and conquer those challenges. Now, challenges will come, challenges will go, and also times of change and uncertainty, right? So, uh, the you know, transition is one of those, uh, and some of the personal uh, happenings that you've mentioned earlier are, are some of those. So what are some strategies that you engage to face those times of change? You know, so for me, I, I talk things through, right? So faith, family, and friends, right? And so much so that because the army taught me how to be an effective planner. And so when I talk things through, I'm literally wargaming courses of action from different angles, right? Like looking at the problem set and looking at from different angles and running the scenarios through in different ways. And then how do you problem solve that singular set and how do you, how do you work through it? And then, and, but I also look at it from a communication standpoint, like how do you, how do you rise to through that challenge, right? How do you communicate through that challenge? Because majority of the time, most of the problems that you have is how do you articulate the problem and how do you communicate through the problem? And that's everything in business, to your personal relationships, to your romantic relationships, to dealing with your kids. It, it literally communication is more than half the battle. And so how do you, for me, it's like, how do you work through that? And how do you articulate it well? Because you think that you are, even as a communicator, and that's my job, there are many times that I thought that I articulated something, right? And then you realize that no nope, message sent is not message received, right? Because you're staring at each other and you're just like, I want to pummel you so bad right now. Like, why do you not understand me? And then you have to kind of step back and you're like, oh, right. Especially like in a world where we're so digitally connected, where we send everything through email and text, like we are text people, right? How many times, like the other day I sent a text to my partner and he sent me a text back and he sent something back. And the way I received it totally ticked me off. And it was because we were in this fast conversation and it totally put me in a pissy mood. And after we talked about, it, I'm like, oh, that's what you meant, right? It was because there was like two words were missing out of the sentence. Because how is it when you text, right? That you're texting so fast that you, you like miss out a couple words. But again, communication is so vital to the way we do everything in our life but two two missing words completely destroyed the rest of your day and so I think it's just utterly important that we spend the majority of your time in communication in clear communication right I think that that's that's the key I would say that's a great tip, great advice to add. <laughs> message sent is not message received. And folks listening in, that's one thing you could take from Olivia today. And we're just so grateful to have you on our show. And folks listening in, how do they contact you, either uh, you, Olivia, or your, your company, Olivia Nunn Communications, LLC? Yeah, so um, I am on LinkedIn, right? You can find me on LinkedIn, Olivia Nunn. Um, people say that they see me everywhere because I'm always posting. Um, I do have a couple handles on Instagram. I have a personal handle. Um, I, like you're more than welcome to follow me if you want to see like my reels and like my beauty pageant stuff. So my personal reel is RCR Princess. Um, if you're wondering why, it's because when I was in college, um, I was actually into the Fast and Furious scene before Fast and Furious came out. I actually... Um, yeah, it was a grease monkey. I created my own. I had a Mr. Two, a 1991 Toyota MR2. I actually imported a clip from Japan and I dropped it in and I was uh, illegally street racing. Yeah. I was a drag racer. Yeah, totally. <laughs> it was hot pink. And before it was hot pink, people didn't know it was awesome. Like I would actually win cars. And I loved the fact when I rolled down my blacked out windows that guys lost to a girl. It was awesome. 
loved it. Um, <laughs> so that's where, <laughs> that's where that comes from. It stands for Eraser Princess. Um, and so you can follow me there personally on Instagram. Um, I have another handle. It's uh, calm dot in dot, uh, dot storm. So calm in the storm. It's my upcoming podcast series with my partner. Uh, we're in the process of creating a whole new series. Uh, we just recorded one podcast. We're in the process of creating more. We tend to go, uh, we plan to do some Instagram lives just to kind of get our, our name out there. But, you know, like I said, it's everything that we want to talk about in the military community, everything from mental health to relationships. He's a retired Sergeant Major in the Army Special Operations. I was conventional Army. So, you know, there's going to be some jabs in there everything from the enlisted side to the officer side, you know, all of that fun stuff. And in between, um, you know, he's over 25 years of experience. I have 20, you know, we're both married and we're now both divorced, have kids. So all of those conversations that we're going to have. And then, um, and then if you want to follow my pageant stuff, it's USOA Ms. New York, all one word, if you want to follow that pageant stuff. And then, um, I'm also on Facebook. You can find me as Olivia Nunn and, um, but yeah, and then you can reach out to me in any one of those platforms on messages. And then my email is olivianun.coms, C-O-M-M-S at gmail.com. And would love to be able to chat with anybody if you have any questions. Like I said, you know, um, while my, my LLC is relatively new, I've been in the space of communications and strategic comms and you know, social media and brand management for over 10 years. And it's, it's what I do. I'm passionate about, especially giving back to the military community. So thank you. We will definitely have that as part of the show notes and, and the video so that you can get a hold of Olivia. Uh, thank you so much for being with us. It's been great. Not only hearing your backstory, Miss Drag Racer, uh, all the way <laughs> to, <laughs> to, to what you're doing today. I personally love it because I love that. Uh, but, folks, if you want to reach the Leadership Void, the Leadership Void at gmail.com is where you'll send that information. Any request for guests, any request for us to cover a leadership topic uh, that is specific, please send it there and we'll curate it. And uh, uh, Vince and I will, will make sure to address all of that. Uh, but today, thank you, Olivia, for being with us. Thank you for your service. Uh, and all that you are doing in the communication space. And we're so happy that you went with your LLC and uh, are, are knocking down some doors uh, as you go through. Thank you so much. And thanks for the chance to come on your show and share with your listeners. And um, yeah, thanks. And thanks for what you guys do and giving back to the community and just being a voice for other veterans to be able to go and share what they're doing. So thank you. Absolutely. We just excited to have you again on our show because storytelling is where the heart is, as you mentioned. And, you know, mental health is real. And we have a show, uh, also a separate entity called Radio Check that we check in on our veteran space, veteran community, military community and first responder first and the 15th of every month. Uh, that will be at 1907 p.m. You could go to LinkedIn Live. We'll be there for Radio Check to check in because mental health is a real deal. And we want to make sure everybody has an opportunity to get heard, seek for help, or seek resources. So check us out on Radio Check. Also, we have a subscri subscription drive to reach our 200th subscriber on our YouTube channel of The Leadership Void. We're almost there. Help us. Hit subscribe and like. You're going to enter into the drawing to win this great book. We're standing O for Scott McGregor. It is a Lessons in Attitude book. And, and added to listen to me in gratitude. <laughs> uh, but it's a great book, folks. Just like us and subscribe. We are honored to have the home team from the Round Point Service Mortgage Corporation being our sponsor. But today we also are very honored to have Olivia Nunn, a great woman who is a giant, a pioneer, but definitely dynamite comes in small packages. So we're honored to have her again. Olivia, thank you for being on the show. Thank you. 